All right, $252 million in federal assistance is coming for Canadian farmers and food processors, as announced by the Prime Minister today. The money is being used to provide uh, PPE for food processors to help with surplus cattle stock and launch a food surplus buying program. The government buys the food and then will distribute it to food banks. But farmers are dealing with serious problems like disrupted supply chains and crops that may never make it to grocery stores. Is the new money even close to enough to save farmers? Let's find out. We're joined now by the Agricultural Minister, Marie-Claude Bibeau. Uh, great to have you here, and I hope you and your family are doing well. Minister, the Canadian Federation of Agriculture uh, sent your government a detailed plan, and I've seen it. They say they needed $2.6 billion in emergency fund to maintain food security. Your government delivered $252 million, basically $2.3 billion less. How did you come up with that number? Well, we're going step by step, but we also have to remember that we have a, a whole suite of business risk management programs for a total of $1.6 billion and even more. Actually, it's the average that is being distributed to support farmers uh, in the previous years. So this is the first thing. So what I'm saying to farmers is that it's important to go and get this money to apply to the different programs. We know that they are not perfect. Uh, they wish uh, they would be uh, simpler and more generous and we heard uh, we we hear them and uh, but we have to to uh, to proceed with this to start with and we are ready and open to provide more and this is what the prime minister said this morning but minister you've got fast food companies like uh, mcdonald's and wendy's they're saying that we, we won't be able to source canadian beef you've got cargill plant uh, in alberta that's had a massive outbreak um the food supply is being disrupted. Your government says we're in a war against COVID. Isn't the first rule in a war protect your supply lines? The agriculture sector saying you're not protecting our food supply lines. We need more money now. This Why is exactly what we've done right today. Now? We are supporting uh, the meat sector uh, mainly. Uh, this is the, the core of our announcement, supporting the pork and the beef producers because they have to face uh, additional extra costs uh, because they have to hold the animals for a while uh, because of the uh, that the pre the. the Food processing plants are facing uh, challenges because of COVID-19. And we are also supporting with a $77 million uh, the food processing uh, industry as well. So they can retrofit, they can buy new equipments, they can, you know, better right. organize to protect their workers as well. But I understand that. But when I, I'm gonna, about to talk to Mary Robinson from the Canadian Federation of Agriculture, and I spoke to her earlier today. I asked her what this means. She said, Evan, if your house was on fire, would you turn away someone who had gave you one bucket? No, but that still means your house is gonna burn down. She says that unless they get more money, farmers who are harvesting now, there's greenhouses that are harvesting peppers in Southern Ontario right now. They will go bankrupt, she says, unless they get more support. You gave $9 billion to students. Why only $252 million to farmers? It's another step. And uh, once again, there's at least $1.6 billion, you know, available through the business risk management. And it's not because uh, they believe it's not sufficient that they shouldn't be taking this money on the table. So I'm really asking them, and we have made it easier. We are saying, you know, you can apply until July 3rd. Uh, we have put in online a calculator so can they can do the, uh, the evaluation of what they can get from the program. They can get up to 75% in advance payment. So there are are programs over there that I don't know, but they don't want to see. It's important to get this money out of the door. It's ready for them so to are apply. You say, to sorry, I, I'm trying, Minister. I just, I just want to make sure I'm understanding. You're suggesting there was previous programs your government had set up, but farmers are not utilizing them for some reason. Is that what you're actually saying? Yes, actually, we have uh, different business risk management programs. We know that uh, we would like to have them, you know, more generous, simpler. They have been cut in a significant way by the conservative a certain number of years ago. But now to put it back, you know, uh, to, to, to make it more uh, at the level they expect it to be, we have to agree with all the provinces. And this is a, a, a work in progress. We had started the discussions with the provinces before COVID-19 ar arrived. So so the work is not completed yet, but these programs are there and we are trying to make them uh, simpler. And uh, even if it's not, you know, at the level they wish right. it could be, there's still money on the table that they can get fast. But 
some of the money that you're Okay, for, for one, the farmer's saying it's not enough, but on the money that is being used, some of it is being used to buy PPE supplies for meatpacking plants. Here's my question. Shouldn't the responsibility to keep workers safe be with the companies? For example, Cargill is a multi-billion dollar US-based company. They have billions of dollars. Why are Canadian taxpayers giving a US-based company money so they can keep Canadian workers safe? Why isn't that their responsibility? So with this program, we pursue two objectives, to increase our meat processing capacity and protect better our workers. So we still have a bit of work to do with our partners and with the provinces as well to define clearly what the rules will be, what the eligible expenses will be, and probably that the, the level of contribution, the share of the government will be lower for bigger businesses and more important for smaller businesses. So these rules still have to be uh, developed in the in the coming days and oh, so, so so you're saying so Cargill may not even be able to access that money just quickly you're going to need to pass legislation to get any of this money moving what if the opposition party say this is way too little and they hold things up does your government have a backup plan to help farmers who are immediately in need of some help Actually, no, we don't have to go back to the parliament uh, to get this money out of the door. It's coming through the agri-stability program, so this money is already uh, ready to go. And uh, normally, these uh, programs go province by province, and the federal is contributing 60%, the province 40%. But for this exceptional situation, we are saying that we will make our 60% available all across Canada, and it will be, it will be up to each and every provinces to decide whether or not they add their contribution. Right. Uh, Mr. Last, last question. Do you have any idea? We, we know that potato farmers are seeing huge parts of their crops rot. They're concerned about that. Dairy farmers have dumped some of their milk. Can you give us a number? How much food now has been dumped because they can't bring it to market? Do you guys have an actual number on how much food is going to waste? I don't have it with me right now, but I can tell you that for dairy, for example, for the meat, uh, because of the mechanisms that the Canadian Dairy Commission uh, have at their disposal, uh, it didn't last long. They were able to uh, to reorganize themselves qu quite quickly, and now they are asking us for an, an increase in their um, capacity to borrow. This is this is one thing that we mm. will have to uh, get the agreement of the parliament, and uh, we have also announced today uh, a program uh, to take some of the surpluses of potatoes, for example, veal, mushrooms, uh, that we can uh, direct uh, to uh, food right. banks all across the country. Okay, but we don't know how much food currently is being wasted. All right, I got to leave it there for time reasons. Mr. I always appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you.